told that if I wanted to remain in the program that it would probably be wise of me to refrain from making Christian artwork because it upset a lot of the professors and 98% of the professors didn't want me in the program. (laughs) So um, it was definitely really hard, but I knew that um, God had a plan and my faith was being tested and I was gonna come through this, but I wasn't, what I wasn't going to do was compromise my own beliefs. Hey, Jessica, welcome to SOG TV. How are you doing? I'm so good. How are you? I am great. I got to actually meet you in person in Las Vegas. That's your home area, isn't it? Yep. I'm based in Las Vegas, Nevada, born and raised. <laughs> well, that's a that's an interesting part of the world. I learned yeah. that very quickly. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are nice and a lot of people are not so nice. Mm-hmm. I, uh, my first night there at the hotel, I got called by one of the staff. Uh, um for for the respect of you, even though I do cuss my show, I, w- I won't say exactly what she said, but she said that MFR referring to me. And I was like, what? But you know, that was, yeah. Cause I didn't have a shirt on in the, in the hall. And yeah. she told me to put a shirt on and she told me to put a shirt on. She didn't ask me and they have a swimming pool there that says, do not wear street clothes. So, and there are no rules. And I, you know, I looked at my wife, I was like, she's lucky I was wearing clothes at all. I mean, but you know, I, I, I nearly just got naked and walked right by her just to do it just because I don't, I don't like when people are rude, but yeah. you know, I, uh, her, her face went white uh, whenever I um, called her on what she said it because from what somebody told me there that people aren't used to people calling on somebody whenever they're rude mm-hmm. they usually just kind of ignore it yeah. but I'm like well you know I'm not that smart so yeah but other than that most people are actually really friendly there okay. um, uh, there's a lot of different types of people and I like meeting different types of people mm-hmm. so I wanted to get you on here um, speaking to Gene Ho um, a mutual friend of ours and um, he showed me some of your art and I thought mm-hmm. it was fascinating because it was very, not just good. It was, it, it was unabashed. I mean, you could tell you, you, you drew with your, your heart, but you weren't afraid to talk because being in a, the political climate, we are a lot of artists um, seem to be very liberal minded and they try not to talk about God or anything and, mm-hmm. or politics and you do both. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, let's, let's start. What, what got you into this in the first place? What got you drawing? That's, that's Um, a very long question probably, but still. Yeah. So I've always kind of liked drawing my whole life. Um, ever since I was in preschool, I have a funny story. Um, my preschool teacher actually came up to my mom after class one day and she was like, you have an artist in the family. Cause I spent like over an hour finger painting an apple. Um, and so from then on, I just, I had the passion for it. And I really started, um, honing my skills when I got to college, I wanted to go to school for art, not because I thought I could make a huge profit off of it, but because, um, you know, I just thought it was fun and I wanted to figure out a way to improve my skills. So when I got to college, that's where I discovered charcoal and oil paint. And um, from there, things just kind of took off. And um, eventually I started allowing the Holy Spirit to work through me. So um, I know that a lot of my work can be considered controversial and people in the art world tend to avoid those topics. But at the end of the day, it's what I'm passionate about and um, it's what the Holy Spirit's placed on my heart. So, yeah. Isn't it ironic that 2000 years ago, um, not even that long ago, um, art was considered to be a, usually about politics or about God a lot of times. Mm-hmm. And now it's controversial to do the same thing that artists have been doing for thousands of years. Yeah. Yeah. It's very interesting. Um, t- I feel like people in today's society kind of, um, they, they don't want to pigeonhole themselves into certain topics or areas of work because uh, they know that there's not a huge market for that kind of work. And a lot of artists nowadays, I hate to say it, but they care about the money over everything else. And um, that is not the boat that I'm in at all. (laughs) I just want to glorify God in any way that I can and spread the joy that uh, the Holy Spirit has placed on my heart. Good. Good. I, um, I respect that. I, um, you, a lot of people will say the words, but they don't actually live it. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean it as a lot of people will have that part of them, but they won't sacrifice anything to do it. And as an artist, I mean, I know a few artists and they usually end up having to go into commercial art or something like that to make any money. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's what they do. Um, and anybody, most people that outside of even art, when they say they're just trying to follow what the, what the Holy spirit tells them to do, they um, it, it's like they're, they're extracurricular activities that they do that. They don't, they don't sacrifice their career to follow what, what they believe God is telling them to do. Mm -hmm. Um, 
why did when did you start drawing like political stuff because i've seen some of your you have some trump stuff some general flan mm -hmm. you know i've i've saw a few people that were on you know on the tour uh the reawakened tour uh when did you actually start uh drawing that that um, kind of stuff so when i was in high school senior year actually my mom had always been super into politics and uh, she always kept up with the media and stuff so um she told me about what was happening with general flan when he was um on trial and she would cry about it almost every day. And um, I understand because it was so horrible what they were doing to his entire family. And um, she was very passionate about the subject and I felt that from her. So I, she gave me the idea to do a painting of General Flynn. And so I took it from there and I, I, I did this oil painting of him and it's all black and white, but there's a red, white and blue oh, teardrop coming. I from saw that. Yeah, so um, that was the first political piece that I'd ever done and then um, Driving up to my school in Washington State, I had the opportunity of um, going to the Reawaken tour on the Washington-Idaho border. And um, I gave General Flynn two drawings that I had done of him, the original painting, and then one more charcoal drawing that I had done because I was a little embarrassed because the technical skills on the um, original painting weren't too good because <laughs> I was just getting started with painting. But um, so I, I got to give him these pieces of artwork. Um, and going to that reawaken tour really opened my eyes to um, just the beautiful community that it is. Yeah. And you could feel the Holy Spirit's presence so evidently there. And it was so wonderful being surrounded by so many positive people um, that were also supportive and <laughs> people that genuinely cared about each other. And it was really inspiring to me. And from there, I started making drawings for other patriots, including um, well, Donald Trump, <laughs> uh, yeah. Joey Gilbert, um, Thomas Renz, Lee Dundas, like a lot of these uh, patriots that go to these events, um, just as my own way of saying thank you to them for what they're doing for America and um, hopefully use my art as um, a means of thanking them for inspiring people in my generation to stand up for what they believe in. So. Yeah, I um I've, I've got to, I've got the opportunity to meet all of them. I've actually become pretty good friends with Lee Dundas. Yeah. Um, she's a spitfire. Uh -huh. um, and um and I, I tell her every time she goes on stage, she uh, both pisses me off and inspires me. Um, so, you know, I don't know whether to cry or get mad. Right. Um, but uh, what I, the, the common core about all of them is that they're all legitimate. They're authentic. Mm -hmm. um, General Flynn, I mean, I've, I've had a few conversations with him and he's, he is legitimately an American patriot. And mm -hmm. he, he, he doesn't just love this nation, but he loves people. Um, he, he really actually means everything he says. He, he cares. I mean, I gave him one of my shirts. Um, I have a shirt that um, I'm not wearing now. This is probably like it's 1776, mm -hmm. um, which is funny. A lot of people have asked me what happened in 1776, um, which is sad in itself because um, yeah. they weren't all young people. Mm -hmm. but, um, but, you know, they, uh, the people that go to this tour, they, they really are. They're, they, they really care. And they're not. I mean, though, you know, when we're talking amongst each other, I mean, of course, there's going to be bashing on the other side, stuff like that. But if you had somebody, a liberal come into one of the tours, nobody hates on them. No. I mean, people are still respectful to them and stuff. Uh, I, I have a lot of conversations. I, I like to have candid conversations with people. I don't like to ask the same stuff. Um, I like to talk about what you're not supposed to talk about mm -hmm. um, or what people usually don't talk about. And I found that um, they don't they don't hate the people. They, they hate the actions. And so they're mm -hmm. not going to be hateful to the people. You know, so most of the time when they're talking about liberals or some or the left or they're they're talking about the actions of the person. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have a lot of respect for that. But anyway, this shows about you, not um, everybody else. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I um, so you you um, <laughs> got officially like you got not officially you got um, professionally trained. You went to college. Uh, yeah. You said Washington State. Uh, yeah, that wasn't the school. I'd rather not say the school because I, okay. I don't know if I want to get hit with a defamation lawsuit or anything. Yeah. But, um, in in today's say, climate, you can't really tell the truth all the time. You have to just kind of skate around things. Right. But I am here to tell you the truth about like my own experience, what happened. Yes. Me, but um, I won't say names or anything like that. Okay. Um, yeah. And I think it's important to note now that there is no resentment there and I'm not holding any unforgiveness in my heart. I've completely forgiven everybody. And um, I've grown so much spiritually from this whole experience. So there is no hate there at all. Um, but I think it's Good. important to, you know, tell what, talk about what I went through to potentially help other students out there who might be um, concerned that they might have to go through the same thing. So um, yeah. Anyway, that's just a little preface. <laughs> No, that that's good. I'm glad. I'm glad you said that. A lot of people don't understand that there's a fine line between uh, being honest and uh, trash talking somebody. Right. And you know, and it's good to be honest because you know you said it, you said it was that you know everything that 
seems to be bad at one time is honestly, it's a learning tool. It's, it's something there to help you grow. Mm -hmm. And that's the only time you should regret something is if you didn't grow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so anyway, let's just jump right in, I guess. I, yeah. um, <laughs> so when I started attending college, I, I didn't really have a relationship with God or with Jesus. I, um, I went to Christian schools and I went to church with my family when I had to, but I wasn't actively pursuing my faith. And, um, I thought I was a believer, but I was still super on the fence about things. And, yeah. um, I, I was definitely super lukewarm. I was not living for God or prioritizing my spiritual health in, in any way. Um, but I started making these friends up at college. I, again, I didn't know anybody. This is a new school in a new state. And, um, you know, I, was, I found myself doing things and saying things just to fit in um, and be accepted because I was prioritizing the opinions of the people around me so much. And I was seeking my joy in the world. And um, I did not have that lens of heaven on. Um, so I was, I was putting on a facade, like everything was great on the outside and I was living the best college life, having the ultimate experience, but on the inside, I was so empty and broken and I couldn't pinpoint why that was. Um, but I knew that my life was going in a direction that it shouldn't be going. <laughs> and so mm. one night I felt like it was the Holy spirit that put it on my heart to pray because it had been so long since I had prayed and, um, I didn't even really know how to pray, <laughs> but I just kind of went for it. And, uh, I said, God, you know, this is how I'm feeling. I'm not happy. The way that my life is going isn't a direction I want it to go in. So if you're real, maybe reveal yourself to me, you know, and change my life. Um, I lay all of this at your feet, Jesus. And if you're real, you're going to manifest to me in some form or another. And he did because I watched my life completely turn around after that. Um, you know, he removed people from my life that weren't supposed to be there. Those unhealthy relationships that I was making were gone. Um, he delivered me from all of these worldly desires um, that I had held on my heart for so long. And, um, you know, he gave me community through my church. I made some of the best friends I've ever made through my church, and I'm so grateful. And, um, yeah, I just, I was completely changed after that one moment of surrender with Jesus. And, you know, I, I'm not the most theologically informed, you know, I don't have all of the evidence to prove that the Bible is real, but what yeah. I do have is my own testimony. And um, I think that for me personally, that means more to me than any book or document out there, because I know that my life is so much better and it's changed so much because of him. And that was not my own doing. It was his. And I know that. Um, yeah. So anyway, over time, I started implementing my beliefs into my artwork because I'd grown so passionate about God. And um, all I wanted to do was share that passion with other people and hopefully plant a seed in non-believers and encourage them to seek that same love that I had felt because I couldn't suppress it at this point. Um, and unfortunately, this was not received well by my professors. Um, they called my work offensive. They told me I should have gone to Bible school. Um, they ridiculed me for choosing a public university instead of a private Christian university. Um, and I had conversations with the chair of the department, and I was told that if I wanted to remain in the program, that it would probably be wise of me to refrain from making Christian artwork because it upset a lot of the professors and 98% of the professors didn't want me in the program. <laughs> wow. So um, it was definitely really hard, but I knew that um, God had a plan and my faith was being tested and I was going to come through this, but I wasn't, what I wasn't going to do was compromise my own beliefs just to yeah. appease the people around me. So um, I stuck with it, but once I had done what I felt like was all I could do. Um, I did everything I could to get through to them, but I hit a wall sort of, and um, I prayed to God, prayed for discernment, and I felt him calling me away from the university to something greater. And so from there, I kind of started my own business, and um, now I'm blessed to be able to make artwork full time. Um, but yeah, it was all the Holy Spirit working the whole time. So yeah, that's kind of the gist of my story. <laughs> well, uh, the, um, the thing is, you kept going. You didn't let other people's opinions stop you, um, you know, whether it's because of your faith or if this would have been anything else except a faith story, if it had been about race or anything like that, um, or if you'd been a, a Indian student or something, uh, the scenario would have been different. People would have marched and picketed in the streets because mm -hmm. of how unfair it was and how wrong it was. Yeah. If you would have been at a male dominated school and you'd been a female and this would have happened, well, I mean, you are a female. Um, <laughs> I mean, that is what you identify as, right? Um, I'm just yeah, kidding. <laughs> I mean, I didn't ask what your pronouns was, but you know, I never actually call somebody by pronouns anyway. So, um, I, you know, I didn't say, Hey, Jessica, how hard are you doing? Right. I mean, right. it sounds kind of dumb, but, um, but you know, I, um, what, what I appreciate about 
what you did is that um, you did it anyway. I mean, you you, you followed what you know. Um, it, to speak in a, um, secular terms, because a lot of people a lot of people on the secular side don't understand religious terms. Well, I was just following what God told me, what the Holy Spirit told me. They don't understand that mm-hmm. um, because I thought for the, for most of my life, I thought when God spoke to you, it was a different voice. You know, right. um, I didn't I didn't understand um, that voice was my voice. Um, I just had to under, I had to know the difference between me and somebody else, you know, um, because I know, well, that's not normally what I think or what I do, but I'd follow it anyway. Um, mm-hmm. you can call it a gut instinct. I truly believe gut instinct is God talking to you, yeah. you know, um, and you know, following your heart and you did that. You followed what you knew was right, regardless of what people said, um, which is ironic that, to me that the idea is so opposite of what it was 50 years ago. I mean, an art teacher being offended by art Mm -hmm. because of the topic used to that's exactly what they tried to do i mean that in the 70s and you know that era they that would they were all about trying to offend people Mm -hmm. you know so it just uh, just because you don't like christianity which still doesn't make sense you know because i i was talking to an atheist friend of mine and i don't know if he's so much atheist now but he's he's very left very liberal very you know we're opposites but we get along i know people say that's impossible but it's not impossible because 98 percent of what we do agree with we agree with mm-hmm. obviously 98 percent of things we agree, agree on there's that two percent that is the most outspoken that we don't agree on so we don't talk about it mm-hmm. but um i told him i said you know if if people would would meet jesus the way jesus introduced himself instead of the way a lot of christians market him i don't understand how they wouldn't love and respect the guy you know jesus didn't go around you know his first two years he didn't say hey I, i'm i'm god um you can worship me now he didn't say anything like that you know, he didn't even say who he was. He, he was, it wasn't about that. It was about showing love. You know, right. how can you not respect and love this guy? So when people say they're offended by Christian art, you might get offended by Christians, but Christianity, I mean, learn, learn who Jesus actually is. You know, mm-hmm. yes, a lot of Christians don't know how to express it properly, but that's in everything. I mean, people don't know how to express what they're trying to say in a way that other people don't talk so people can hear. People talk the way they understand. Yeah. You know, so you, you've got to understand that. That's why Christians are horrible marketers because they feel this so powerful and all they know is to say exactly the way they feel. They don't know how to say it the way somebody else would understand it. Right. Right. If that makes any sense whatsoever. Yeah. Um, which it took a while for me to understand that because when I, um, I didn't like Christians most of my life. Um, I didn't dislike them. I just was not a big fan of being around them mm-hmm. um, because I was never clean enough and I'm still not clean enough. <laughs> uh, and, you know, when I became a Christian, um, I started actually seeing the differences between me and most Christians and stuff. And at first I was very, I was offensive towards Christians because the way I would word things would almost be like, I'm saying, well, the Bible's not real. I'm like, that's not what I said, <laughs> but I had to listen to my own words and realize that, well, it, it comes off like that. It comes off. Like I'm saying that this isn't real and whatever your denomination, listen, there's over 34,000 different denominations of Christianity. You're going to talk about some part of the Bible that another Christian is going to disagree with you on, mm-hmm. you know, don't focus on that. You know, focus on the thing that you do, do agree on. And most everybody, even non-Christians agree, love everybody. Mm-hmm. That's pretty simple. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so sometimes that's all you can focus on is just loving everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're all worthy of love. We're all equal in the eyes of God. Um, and it just comes down to respect at the end of the day. Like um, if I look at my own situation and I would sit through critiques as a Christian and I would have atheist friends um, also sitting in that same critique, but it was those atheist friends that were coming to my defense. Um, yeah. And telling my professors like, hey, that's not okay. You can't tell her that she can't make this type of work because um, that's discriminatory, discriminatory, excuse me. Um, yeah. yeah, we're all human. Um, and it's about taking off the lens of the world and putting on the lens of heaven and realizing yeah. that this is so much bigger than all of us. And, yeah. you know, we can have our little differences, but at the end of the day, we're all going to come face to face with the same God. So, yeah. <laughs> I, um, I, I completely agree. I just found out a friend of mine that I thought was atheist. I've known him since 2017 and, um, I always assumed he was atheist, but he's very accepting of people. He doesn't, he doesn't preach about, Oh, there is no God. And it's like, but the way he'd speak, you know, he, he has a strong disdain for Christianity and for religion altogether. But I spoke to him the other day and he said one thing, I, cause I was talking about near death experiences. I've, I've studied a lot of them and I've had a couple of people on my show that have had them. Cool. Um, and I've realized a couple of things. One, most uh, people that uh, consider themselves a faith of something, either Christianity, Muslim or something, they've never actually done any research on near-death experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, and I found a lot of them is because they're scared, because they're scared they might find out something that's going to contradict what they believe. So okay. they automatically say it's not right, real, but they don't know anything about them. It's kind of like people saying, well, Chris, I've heard preachers say, well, we don't worship Buddha. Well, Buddhists don't worship Buddha either. You know, yeah. it's, you, you've got to learn about something you're going to talk about. 
-hmm. but but i did study them and one of the common themes is that um that uh we're all kind of ignorant you know we um and we can't you're right i mean i'll say it in a different way that you say look at the look through the lens of heaven look through the lens of it as as if you're a spirit because we are we're all spiritual beings living a human life you know where this is the small experience is this we're actually nothing but spirits you know um and when we start realizing that realizing that if i grew up the way you did with the experiences that you did the education you'd have with the family that you had i'd probably believe exactly the same way you believe you know whether you're a muslim whether you're a hindu a christian a buddhist an atheist that's why a lot of people believe the way they do and that's why it's hard to get them to change their belief is because it, it's a very strong foundation and nobody wants to believe that their foundation is wrong. Right. And that's why I don't even try to argue, you know, mm-hmm. stuff like that and try to get you to believe differently than what you believe. Cause that's not my, it's not my job. You know, Jesus, I, I, I kept on reading and reading because when I became a Christian, um, I was very conflicted because everybody made it out like we were supposed to convert the world. And I'm mm-hmm. like, a Christian is supposed to be somebody that's Christ like, and I'm right about that. Right. Your, our job is to try to, embody what christ did the way he was yeah well yeah. i've noticed most people don't try to do that at all they don't use jesus as the example they use parts of the bible as an example well i can i can take many verses in the bible to excuse just about anything i do um me going up and punching somebody in the face proverbs eighteen six: lips of a fool deserve to get struck i can use the bible to to justify just about anything yeah. but using jesus um uh, we'll say the castle for first stone story a lot of people know that story, you know, where, you know, they grab the, the Pharisees, grab the adulterer and say, hey, we're going to stone her. Jesus says, hey, he who without sin cast the first stone, right? Well, looking through a Christian perspective, Jesus was without sin, correct? Mm-hmm. Well, if he was without sin, that meant he could have cast a stone, but he didn't. So the lesson isn't just about don't judge people. It's also just because you can doesn't mean you should. Yeah. And a lot of people, and, and so I use Jesus as the example. So everything I do, I try to, you know, um, I'm like, well, uh, I, I say I try to do it. I, I, I am not intentionally thinking that way. It's in my subconscious. It's in my, my, in my frame set. The way, the way my, the way I'm built is just mm-hmm. that. Well, Jesus was a great example for the way to live. Even before I was a Christian, I knew that. And when I found out Jesus was an effeminate, was not an effeminate pacifist. That's when I really started respecting him because that's the Jesus everybody told me. Oh, you know, turn the other cheeks. That wasn't necessarily the way he was. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he was real, but he 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 was very wise. He he tried to do things the right way. You know, and, and the right way wasn't always the way people wanted him to do it. You know, because you would think the right way is well, kill that person. No, that's not the right way. You know, they yeah, were justified in doing it, but does that that doesn't make it right? Mm-hmm. You know, and so if Christians would start emulating Jesus instead of being try instead of trying to follow all the rules of the Bible, they probably find a lot less hate mm-hmm. in some areas. I'm not saying that there would be no hate. I mean, I'm sure people would hate right. just the fact that they're Christian, but <laughs> it wouldn't be trying to tell everybody that they're wrong about everything. It would just right. be love because Jesus didn't try to tell everybody they were wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, he just, he just told people to love people. He, he didn't care who you were. He treated everybody with respect. Yeah. yeah. So I don't understand why anybody could hate Jesus, but I do understand how people could not like Christians because I was that guy, mm-hmm. you know, and I still have my issues with a lot of people, but I don't, I don't hate Christians. Um, I, I actually feel sorry for a lot of people mm-hmm. because they're, they, um, they refuse to see Jesus and they see the Bible and I'm not saying the Bible is wrong. That's not what I'm saying. But like I said, you can turn words, you can turn words around in the Bible to make it fit your agenda. You can't turn words around with what Jesus did. Mm-hmm. And so Jesus is one stable foundation that if you were to follow Jesus, you wouldn't be led astray. I can lead you to any direction I want to. If you are nothing but biblical, mm-hmm. just because I can change something around. I mean, how many people use Romans 12 to say, um, don't be conformed by this world and, and we're supposed to be different. You know, well, they, a lot of people use that as a separatist act. Like we're supposed to be separate from everybody. Well, how do you affect anybody? First Corinthians nine, 22 through 23. I became weak to win the week. I became all things, all men so that I can win a few that's called adapting. And that was Paul, mm-hmm. you know, um, I'm rambling. Sorry. <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. Uh, but, um, but anyway, so I, I, I firmly, firmly respect that, that you were able to do that. And now you, do you have a, do you have a, a store is everything online or do you just go to conferences? 
Um, currently, everything is online. You can find all of my art prints on my website. It's just fineartbyjessica.com. Um, I post updates on my social media as well. You can find me at Fine Art by Jessica. Um, but right now, I don't have a storefront or anything. I'm just kind of traveling around to different trade shows and conferences and um, just trying to meet people and get my work out there. So Yeah. Yeah. No, that's just great. I don't... Started. I don't know if a storefront, if having a brick and mortar store would, is really the best for, you know, art, to be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of people that are, I mean, I guess you can, but the, the overhead costs and stuff, but art's one of them things. I mean, hell, you could be a Hunter Biden and get paid millions for your work. Right. Um, <laughs> but of course you have to, you have to be really good into money laundering and stuff like that. So I don't think that's really your path. Yeah. Yeah. Not really uh, my passion, but. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, so, um. What uh, what was your favorite? Uh, do you have a favorite thing that you that you drew or painted or is it um, is it called when it's charcoal? Is it called drawing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm I mean, not I, I'm not artistic. You know, I what? tell people I'm, I'm autistic, autistic but... not artistic. <laughs> well, you know, I'm not picky about that sort of thing. It's okay. Um, Good. Yeah, so I actually have a couple pieces that are my favorite because I really do feel like they came from the Holy Spirit. Um, before I left to my university, I met with a woman by the name of Amanda Grace. You probably know her. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so she basically solidified everything that I felt the Lord saying to me that um, I was being called to greater things and um, everything that I went through was to strengthen me and prepare me to go out and um, you know, share my beliefs without any fear um, and to love others wholeheartedly the way that Jesus did. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh she anointed my eyes and she told me that she knew that the Lord would begin showing me visions of things that he wanted me to draw or communicate with the world. And so I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess we'll see if that happens. I still didn't really yeah. know how to feel about that. But um, after I left the university in full obedience to God um, and completely surrendered to him in all of my ways, um, I started having these visions and um, I wouldn't call them, I don't know if I would call them visions, but they were images that were placed so clearly and strongly in my mind that yeah. I couldn't think about anything else. And I just had to sit down and draw them. And so I really felt like that was from the Holy Spirit. And um, one of those pieces was Maundy Thursday. Um, it's it's a photo. Sorry, I'm looking to see if I maybe have it around here somewhere. But um, you can find it on my website. It's the washing of the feet. And I think that it speaks um, volumes to how we're supposed to walk forth in uh, humility and grace as Christians. Because we look at the last days of our lives and all the crazy stuff that we would go out and do and really live it up. And uh, we look at Jesus's life of whom we are to follow. Um, and he knew that these were his last days and he washed feet. So I think that that's just um, a beautiful testament to the way that we're supposed to live. So that piece and then um, another one was the lion and the lamb, which is representative of Revelation 5, or at least that's how I read it um, yeah. after receiving the image. But everybody has their own interpretations. Um, but I just love that part of Revelation where it says that Jesus was slain as a lamb, but will come again triumphant as a lion. So. Yeah, I'd say those two pieces are probably my favorite because I felt closest to God in creating those pieces. Nice. That's a, um, and I'll make sure that that I, I display them on here while we're while we're speaking. Okay, sounds um, good. Thanks. <laughs> I, um, that's that's why I wanted you to send me the artwork and everything because I, I'd oh. seen it, but I didn't. I wanted to be able to put it on here. And, okay. But uh, like I said, I'm learning how to do it, so I can do some minor editing stuff. So that I can do. Okay. Um, cool. We'll make sure I, I get those too. Yes, yes. I, I did get them and everything. Um, okay. I uh, I think it speaks volumes to, to uh, what happens when you follow what you believe your path is, um, uh, your passion. It's funny. I hear a lot of people saying, um, ironically, a lot of Christians have said this, that you, you shouldn't be following your passion. Um, and they said that will lead you down to the devil, which here in the Bible Belt, everything leads to the devil apparently. <laughs> um, but I, I'm like, I'm not, I don't, I don't name my cockroaches. So I, I don't, I'm not scared of the devil. Um, mm -hmm. I have a lot more faith in God than I do the devil. Absolutely. So I will do whatever I feel that I'm called to do um, without fear. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I'm not going to sit there and think, well, that's the, I'm not going to meditate because that's, that's how the devil gets in your brain. I was like, well, how do you think uh, Peter in Acts 10 entered a transcendental state? That was transcendental meditation. You know, he, that's how he spoke to the Lord. You know, it's just, you know, what is your purpose of doing it? If your purpose isn't to communicate with the devil, then I wouldn't be scared of communicating with the devil. Yeah. Um, but, um, but a lot of people prefer to live in fear. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why at the, they hear revelations and they're talking about the end is nigh. You know, we need a, we need a hurry because the end is coming and stuff like that. I don't, I don't care. I mean, I'm going to do the same thing today, tomorrow. Exactly. 
I mean, it's just, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that it's not about to happen. I don't know. I don't, I don't care. It's not going to change anything, any of my decisions. It's kind of like, I, I've asked this question. I'm like, um, why is it so important to market um, Jesus with hell, using hell as a marketing tool? You know, a lot of people say, do you know if you're going to heaven or hell? I'm like, that shouldn't be the reason why you follow Jesus. It's because yeah. you're scared of hell. Mm -mm. I'm like, hell has nothing to do with my belief system. It might've worked 2000 years ago. <laughs> But it doesn't work now. It's like I've I've grew up in hell. I mean, I know you can say, well, real hell is worse. I don't care. That's not why I follow Jesus. Um, that's a horrible reason. Could you imagine getting married to somebody just simply because you didn't want your life to be rough? I mean, and it had nothing to do with loving the person or following the person. Yeah. I'm like, we should follow. Like I said, you said Jesus getting washing feet on his last days. His example was more important than the whole Bible. Mm -hmm. And that is controversial to a lot of people. See, you can offend liberals. I can offend Christians um, because <laughs> I will say what I find obvious. If you call yourself a Christian, Jesus should be the most important. People are like, well, all the other parts are part of Jesus. Yeah, but you can't, you can misinterpret. No, you can't. If you read it the way I'm just, I'm doing their voice. I don't know how to change voices. Um, <laughs> if, if you read it the right way, you won't misinterpret. I'm like, well, tell the other 33,999 denominations that. I'm like, mm -hmm. who was right? You know, uh, you listen to God. You listen, you have com conversations with God. If you're reading the Bible and you're talking to God, you're going to get what you need out of it. No matter what. I don't care if you said the whole thing was fake. If you listen to God while you're reading the Bible, you're going to get something out of it. Mm -hmm. But if you're not listening to God or if you're not using Jesus as an example, that's how you end up pharisaical because you're not using Jesus as an example. You're trying to find the laws that say to do this or say to do that. I have two terms. I have biblican and I have pharisaical Christian. A biblican is just somebody that tends to follow the rules. They're, they're, they find the Bible, the Bible verse that says, do this, do this, do this. I'm not saying they're wrong or right. I'm just saying that's what they do. A pharisaical right. Christian is somebody that does things without the love of God. That everything about the Bible and Jesus, they'll hate you because you're a Hindu or you, you practice yoga because that obviously means that you worship the gods that the yogis do because you stretch the way yoga. I mean, it's just people are just, they find reasons to hate somebody. And like, if that's not their reason for doing it, then I would say they're praying. Did you know Christians and Jews didn't invent prayer? I mean, I don't know if you knew that, but, you know, we all pray. So should we stop praying because it was not invented by Jews and Christians? No. I'm like, why are you doing it? Then do it. Yeah. You know, and, it, you know, it's like, why are you doing your art? You're doing your art because of your passion. I bet you that if you drew or painted or whatever you want to call it, if you did your art because of a sense of duty, that it wouldn't be nearly as impactful. Mm-hmm. If, 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 but you follow it because it's a passion. It's something that you just, you love doing. You actually love getting up and, and, and drawing and, and stuff. I mean, it's just, you can tell, you can tell in your artwork that it's, it's something that you really, you, you look closely at people and you know, your job is to, to look at a picture like of somebody and see a picture in your head and put it out on paper of what your interpretation of what they are. Mm -hmm. and and it shows in your work and what you're trying to say i mean i i think it's obvious uh but um not everybody can do that me i actually don't see pictures in my head it's hard for me to see pictures um so i couldn't uh, and i just while you were talking it, it occurred to me maybe that's why i can't draw is because i don't see pictures at all i, I see emotions energy feelings um so that's how i remember things i remember the feeling i had at that time yeah yeah but you know and that's that's an art in itself, like being able to um, spiritually connect with people um, yeah. and just seeing how uh, somebody can make you feel that's that is a spiritual experience. And that's a gift in itself. Um, it's, you know, it's different from the physical aspect of being able to look at something and then reciprocate it onto paper. Um, but it, it's a lot deeper than that. So, yeah, I, which. Don't get me wrong. I, a lot of times I wish I could do what you do. Um, I tried. I remember the first drawing that I drew when I was, I was probably in first grade, something like that. And it was, um, I drew like it was in the um, jungle and it was like, I was there. Um, and I drew a helicopter and everything else. And that was the first and last drawing I ever drew in my entire life. Um, and I kind of gave up art after that. I don't know why <laughs> I just, uh, probably cause it reminded me of, uh, uh, do you remember the movie? Um, platoon it was the 1980s anyway there was this movie it was basically about vietnam and stuff but it, it scared the hell out of me um mm. <laughs> so i i'm like oh, maybe no. that's why i just i just you know the one time i remember something it's like that and you yeah know. but you know it's a uh, it'd be it, it's it's a powerful gift to be able to express thoughts and emotions onto paper because people need to see that they they need art i, I believe art is more important 
than most of what you learn in school. Um, and it's also the only subject I flunked. Um, but, <laughs> but it, but I think, you know, it's, it is the most important because it, um, it's the, uh, I think it, 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 even if you aren't a Christian, I think it, it gets you closer to God. Um, because you have to start seeing things from a different perspective, mm -hmm. you know, um, you have to uh, see the world and, and it, it shows in people's art, the way they see things. I mean, look at Picasso. I mean, dude was messed up. Um, but, um, I don't know. I can't talk a lot about art because I know virtually nothing. Um, <laughs> I like to go to museums. I like to look at art. Um, it's just one of the things looking at things that I'll never be able to do. Uh, so what's, what's your, what's your end goal? What, where do you plan on going? Like, well, in the next five years, we'll say that in the next five years, what do you plan on doing? Ooh, okay. So I get this question a lot and. Well, I then I take the question back. I'll find something else. No, no, no. no I'm just no. kidding. I, I, I would love to answer because I actually don't have an answer. Um, and that's not to say that I'm not ambitious and I don't have goals and dreams. I do. But at the same time, I recognize that God's plan is a lot more important than my own plan and his ways are greater than mine. Um, and so I'm not going to, I guess, pigeonhole myself into one way of thinking. And like, I have to be here and I have to do this, this and this, um, because I, uh, I think it's more important to just sit back and trust where God's taking me. Um, and he never fails. So and he's not going to start now. So yeah. um, I know that wherever he leads me is going to be good. And I'll be able to um, find contentment and joy and in, in every circumstance, no matter where he puts me in life. So um, I have I have some desires and goals and dreams. But um, at the same time, I know that God already has the plan for my life set out and I trust him. <laughs> no, that's a it's a hard, hard thing to do. Most people never learn that lesson. If you don't want me asking, you're not supposed to ask, but I will. How old are you? 22. <laughs> 22. Right. Well, I mean, you're, you're, you're uh, a lot more um, spiritual and mature than a lot of people. Um, a lot of people confuse knowledge of the Bible as being mature and it's not, it's understanding, understanding of God um, mm -hmm. um, that makes you mature in the spirit. Um, and a lot of people struggle with that because we, we like to have control and it's when you don't have control, when you let go of that control and you just do whatever yeah. comes natural, just do it. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I've found the older I get, the more I, the more I learn, I'm learning to let go because I was the opposite. I always wanted to plan. Um, mm -hmm. and every time the plan fails, apparently I really like to hear God laugh because I tell <laughs> my plans. Um, and, yeah. um, and they don't usually end up working out, um, and, or not working out the way I planned on it. Um, heck I was a cop for, you know, 11 years, 12 years. And, um, and I was never supposed to be a cop. My, I had a major, major back surgery in 04 and I was caught by 06. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, my spinal cord was actually severed. And um, and I became a cop when I shouldn't have become a cop. And I kept doing it anyway, even though my body was killing me and stuff, but I still did it. I was stubborn. I, I, I put it in my head. This is what I'm going to do. I had my plans. We're going to do it. You know, God be damned, you know, and that's the way I lived life is like, I don't care if this is what God's plan is for me. This is what I'm going to do because this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And every time. I thought I was going to be changing the world by being a cop. And I realized maybe once or twice, can I think in my whole career of, that I actually felt like I made a difference. Um, now I'm sure I'd made more of a difference than I, I give myself credit for, but in my memory, I didn't. And then when I became a car salesman of all things, car salesman, um, I, uh, first I became a Christian working at a car dealership. Um, they actually had Bible study on Friday mornings. Um, and, um, and I would go to it and I realized that Christians cuss because I heard them cuss. <laughs> And it's like, you're not supposed to cuss. They're like, who told you that? Every Christian that hears me talk, um, they tell me about what I should and should not do. They're like, well, that's not, that's not Jesus Christianity. That's just Bible Christianity. That's people interpreting something in the Bible that says you shouldn't cuss. Right. Um, but they did. So I, that's when I started actually getting curious about what Jesus actually said. Instead mm -hmm. of curious, I quit paying attention to Christians. But I also learned a very, very important thing that actually put me on my life path was that no matter what you're doing in life, if you're doing it in the service of others, if you're trying to help people, you can do it anywhere. I was, I would get uh, my, um, a fleet manager would, would come up to me periodically and say, man, I really love how you minister to people. I wasn't a Christian. So my idea of ministering was hitting somebody upside the head with the Bible. I'm like, I am not ministering to anybody, but they would be crying in my office, you know, talking about their lives and stuff. And, you know, and it wasn't because they were just trying to get a car or something. We, I just asked questions and we end up having long conversations. And I realized it doesn't matter just wherever I go, just try to do that instead of trying to, to do this because my brain tells me that I can make an impact or something. Right. And so that's what I do. Um, and, um, and I, you know, I, uh, you, you've heard the expression, um, God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the called. Um, yeah. I embody that because I've not meant to do anything I'm doing now. Um, 
or at least I thought I wasn't meant, I wasn't built for it. I thought, but mm -hmm. you, no matter what you're doing, like with your work, um, you can impact people and that, that a lot of people can't because yeah. you can do a lot with a picture. I mean, you can, you can really speak to somebody's soul, you know, mm -hmm. um, we tend to mess communication up with our words, you know, but pictures, pictures will say what the person is wanting it to say, mm -hmm. what they're needing it to say, yeah. you know, and it'll say it the perfect way to say it. Mm -hmm. And so I, you, you have a, you have a gift, but you also have a really big responsibility. Yeah. Which I probably doesn't help telling you that, but. <laughs> but I, you uh, know what? You're so right that um, God, God qualifies the call because um, I look at my life and the ways that I've struggled with depression and anxiety and um, all of this mental stuff. Right. Um, and the ways that God has changed me, like following God and doing ministry from where he has placed me in life has changed me. Like in college, I couldn't get up in front of my class and give a presentation because I had so much anxiety. I'd rather skip it and fail than have to present. Um, but yeah. now I'm, I'm going to these conferences and I'm talking to so many people and I'm, listening to their stories. And, um, I don't, it's just so beautiful the way that, um, I've seen God work not only through, um, my career life, but, uh, mentally as well. So, yeah, it's just, are you, uh, do you ever, uh, commission your work or is it purely, you just do your thing and then sell the pictures? Um, I, I, com I commission work. I do custom work. Um, so if anybody has like a, an idea in mind, if they don't have a photo for it, I can bring it to fruition. Or if, um, they do have a photo that they just want drawn, I can do that too. <laughs> nice. I, um, yeah. cause people, you know, unfortunately we have AI and stuff, but I've looked at the difference between AI and, and art and AI still can't do it. Um, you, I don't know what it is, but you can tell when somebody puts heart into something, mm. um, when something is. You know, well, I'm sure they've, I, I watched this in a movie once. Um, it was an art teacher talking to an artist that you can't, if you make it too perfect, that it doesn't seem real. It doesn't talk to people mm. that you don't want something so perfect that it doesn't have any, any issues whatsoever. But mm. I don't know. I don't, like I said, I don't know anything about art. I mean, the most that I know about art is literally what I've seen in movies. Um, and I don't watch art movies at all. Um, <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm very secular in my movies. I, um, I like things with killing a lot of killing. Um, you know, it's probably not good, but you know, whatever. Um, yeah. it, it keeps me real. Yeah. Um, I was, I was, you know, my wife told me that she thinks I was a soldier in my past life or something. I, um, you know, uh, I like to say that to, um, like, uh, like hyper, hyper sensitive Christians. I do have a tendency to take Christians off and I don't, it's not, my purpose isn't to put down that it's, it's honestly, it's to make you see yourself. Um, because if you're take yourself too seriously, then there, there's probably an issue there. There's, you're probably scared of something, you know, um, I, I have four close friends that all four of them know exactly what my beliefs are. And I don't usually tell Christians my beliefs. Um, and I ask them, um, why they don't judge me based on my beliefs. Cause they're, I mean, I align with Jesus, but I don't necessarily align with all Christians. In right. fact, most Christians, it's the way my perspective of what Jesus said, you know, so it's not, it's not anti-Christian, but a lot of Christians would call it anti-Christian. And they tell me, well, it's, it's because we could be wrong. Or they say, I, they they don't know they're talking amongst each other, but you know, they say, well, I could be wrong. You know, it, it, we, who knows, you know, you can only go off what you believe is right. And the, the, the thing about all, the common denominator of all four of them, all four of them are doctors. Um, and I don't think any of them know each other. Um, but, um, but they say that, and it's true. It's you can only take your perspective, and you know. And I, I'm getting that because I've I've said that the Bible actually talks about reincarnation, uh, and people are like, oh no, it doesn't. I'm like, yeah, it does. It really does. Um, Jews actually, most Jews I've spoke with believe in reincarnation. Um, they've talked about it, and then I ask, well, there's. Have you heard that part of the Bible that says where Jesus is talking with the disciples, and he asked Peter, he said, who do they say I am? And Peter says, they say you're Elijah. Jesus says, no. That's John the Baptist. He's come and gone. Elijah died like 2000 years before this. And how could he be Elijah if Elijah is already dead? And then yeah. he said, well, that was John the Baptist. So what's he talking about there? I can't get a single person to tell me what that means, but I have heard people tell me, explain to me, well, they're just talking about reincarnation. It was a very common theme in that day. Everybody believed in it. You know, and there's another part of the Bible that talks about, it. but I'm only saying this is because people like to argue about the Bible, but if you don't believe exactly the way they believe, they'll say you're wrong. Right. And I'm like, that's not the point. That's not the purpose. 
Uh Like Jesus didn't argue about reincarnation. He didn't argue about whether um, this was this way or this was that way and stuff. He just said, love people, Mm -hmm. you know, like I have a shirt that says, don't be a dick, the Bible. That's pretty much the Bible. That's the (laughs) the whole purpose. Don't be a dick. Just, you know, but, mm-hmm. And he knows I don't Absolutely. I don't really filter my words. <laughs> I, um, I I use the the uh, new Trailer Park Joe translation of the Bible. Um, <laughs> I uh, but um, but yeah. So I mean, it's uh, getting back to art. Your um, people struggle with translating things to get other people to understand. But I've noticed with art, you can show it to a very well educated person, and then you can show it to somebody that's very uneducated, and you can say the same thing. And they will both understand it. But if you say something to an educated person versus saying something to an uneducated person, you have to change the way you say things. Mm-hmm. But art's just one of them things that you don't have to change it per person. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so beautiful because it resonates differently with each person and people are drawn to certain pieces and, um, you know, everybody has their own story. And yeah. um, so I think that being able to create art that resonates with people and that touches them at a spiritual level and at an emotional level um, that I know my words couldn't. Um, I I think that that's, that's really one of my desires. Like um, a lot of people ask me, aren't you worried about making money? Like, aren't you worried that creating Christian or political artwork, you're not gonna be able to make money. And I'm like, it's not about that. Being able to see people look at my work and having them brought to tears because it resonates so deeply with them. That is more than enough for me. I don't need the money because I know that um, I'm fulfilling a purpose of mine spiritually and emotionally. So um, yeah, it is, it is, uh, beautiful being able to hear people's different perspectives and the way that they read my art. And even I can learn things about my art that I didn't know because of the things that other people tell me. Um, But yet there is something so um, beautiful about being able to sit back and recognize, you know, I don't know everything and I'm not going to be the smartest person in the room and I'm not the most well-spoken person in the room. And I know that there's always going to be something for me to learn from the people around me. Um, So, you know, it speaks to humility and, um, I, I just, I think that, um, you know, not being those things puts me in that humble headspace where I know that, you know, this is bigger than me. It's not about, it's not necessarily about my own interpretation of my artwork. Sometimes it's about how other people interpret it. It's about the observer and the, what they think and how they read it. So, yeah. Well, you can tell people that you're multilingual. Um, <laughs> it's the <laughs> oldest form of communication. I mean, you can talk to anybody in any language by using your art. Um, mm-hmm. That's how they used to do in the cave cave times. I'll call it the cave times. I don't think everybody lived in caves during the cave times, but yeah. you know, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah. But you're you're able to explain things to people uh, that other people can't. That's that's a lot of power. Um, mm-hmm. um, and you know, and I'm I'm really glad you're using it the way you believe you're supposed to. I mean, instead of just trying to draw something that's really cool looking. Um, which, I mean, that's, that can be fun in of itself, but still, I mean, um, you're not drawing buildings. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're drawing most of what I've seen that you draw, you draw a lot of people um, or, or situations, you know, to express something. Uh, so that's, um, uh, I bet it, I bet it really, really makes somebody feel good whenever you show them an artwork of themselves, you know, because you don't know, we don't get to see that. I mean, a, a lot of them people that you draw probably have seen multiple pictures of themselves but there's something different about the art. And I feel like I keep repeating myself. Um, no. I figure if I say the word art enough, that it sounds like I know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> but um, I, um, I definitely appreciate you, you know, taking the time to, to come on here. Uh, Cause you know, it's, it, it is nerve wracking being on a podcast, especially a podcast that you've never heard of um, <laughs> because you never know what kind of situation you're going into and what you're going to be talking about or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but I appreciate it, you know, cause I, I think more people need to hear who you are and see your art. I mean, not, not that you're not important, but your art is primarily what I think they need to see. Right. Um, <laughs> I, um, but you know, I, uh, if you're only 22 doing, doing work like this and there's a lot of talented artists, but a lot of times what I've found is that they don't come into their own for a long time. Um, there, a, a lot of people at 22, that's what, is that Gen Z? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, a lot of them are thinking about money in politics yeah. and that's about it. Um, and they're not thinking about politics like you would want them to think about politics They're thinking about, well, you know, it's, it's like a Winston Churchill said it. He said, he said, if you're young and you're a conservative, you're heartless. And if you're old and you're a liberal, you're brainless. Um, <laughs> and what he was actually trying to say was that, you know, young people tend to think with their hearts 
more than anything. And then when you get older, you start thinking about things. Well, it's when you can combine the two because either one of them without the other is dangerous. Mm-hmm. Um, it's being able to combine it and use your brain, you know, you know, cause that's part of what God gave you. You know, he gave you a way to think about things and to interpret things and to, you know, cause you still have a choice. You, you can choose not to follow what your, your instinct, what God's telling you to do. And you can just follow your thing. You don't have to do what God tells you to do. Um, it, it is a choice. Um, and the fact that you're still choosing, even with people telling you, you shouldn't, it's going to ruin your career. It's going to, you know, uh, you may not even graduate. Well, this was before back when you were still going to school, you, you might not graduate because you've chosen to, um, to tell people the way you think in your art. Um, yeah. I, I just pray that you don't stop, um, doing, following your heart, no matter what it says. I mean, mm-hmm. cause there's going to be times that you don't agree with your heart necessarily. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, like I told you about my shirt, don't be a dick. To be honest, it took me six months to even make the shirt um, because I did not want to make it. I don't mind offending people, but I don't want to offend people, you know, right, right. but God kept telling me, own it, own who you are, you know, quit being ashamed that you're rough. Yeah. So I stopped being ashamed and I realized a lot more people are accepting of it than I thought. Mm-hmm. Um, cause being around Christians, you know, I don't have a lot of friends. Um, and I started hanging around Christians and a lot of them were very judgmental and I've lost a lot of friends that were christians because i'm too rough around the edges for them uh mm-hmm. but that's fine i'm not here to help them they don't need right. my my assistance my guidance they don't need somebody to tell them that they're loved no matter what you know um and people need that people need to be told things mm-hmm. and sometimes people just don't have the right words so as long as you're putting your art out there and making sure people see it um in any way that you can think of how you know whether it's a brick and mortar store going on conferences um advertising your website, um, putting ads out there, you know, making shirts with your art on it, um, which would be pretty cool. That's coming from a guy that makes shirts. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying that. Um, <laughs> I, um, I was thinking I, I made a shirt with uh, um, that I'm going to, I'm going to try to have it done by the time we go to, go to Miami. Are you going to Miami? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I'll be there. <laughs> um, by the time we go to Miami, I want to try to have it, but it's the Trump mug, sh- his mug shot. And on the back, it says, make America awake again. Oh, wow. Um, you know, um, but uh, I was thinking before I got the mugshot, I was like, I don't know how to do this because I couldn't get a hold of my artist because he's in he's in um, Chicago right, right now. And I was like, I don't know how to do this. I can't do this in time. So I had my wife download a picture. But I was like, I do know an artist. But then I was like, to have you draw something like that that quickly would be I mean, that it, it, I, I don't know if that's even possible. Plus, I'm broke. So um, there's that. Uh, but um, but I think well- it's important to get your work out. Uh You know what? It's funny you say that because I was actually going to start working on a drawing of Trump's mugshot. Um, That's funny. (laughs) Yeah, but I I really appreciate you having me on here and giving me an opportunity to talk about um, my story and my artwork and um, the reason that I do what I do. So, um, yeah, as an artist who's just getting started, especially, it's been hard to get out there and um, figure out ways to talk about my art without feeling judged so yeah. um i appreciate this and i appreciate you <laughs> yeah no I, I no they uh, don't don't let the feeling of judgment stop you um i know that's easier said than done because uh, everybody even if they don't pretend like they don't want to uh, like people think i don't care what people think i do um i just choose not to let it stop me um, don't let it stop you uh say uh say, speak your truth and I, if, if it's the truth, it shouldn't matter if everybody that's in the same room as you disagrees, even right. if they're all on the same side as you, if they disagree, but it's your truth, mm-hmm. keep, uh, keep saying it, yeah. um, keep doing it. Um, uh, keep drawing. I don't know. How long does it usually take you to, to do a picture? Usually. Um, I know that's a very broad thing, but yeah, it depends on the size, but anywhere between seven and 18 hours to do a drawing. Um, and that's like without breaks. So normally a couple days or so. You will you will spend that long to drawing on something without a break? No, no, no. Uh, I, I definitely uh, take breaks, but with okay. breaks, it, it adds up to a couple of days. Okay, <laughs> that's about seven to eighteen hours. I mean, I, I uh, force myself over here to even work on anything, and it's, I'm only in front of the computer for a couple of hours. Like I don't know, <laughs> get me to sit still. I um, no. In fact, in fact, the only thing that keeps me in here is conversations. I love to have a conversation. I like mm-hmm. talking to people, no matter what, who you are, we can have a great conversation until it gets judgmental. Um, as soon as somebody starts judging me or telling me that, you know, I, I'm supposed to believe this or I'm supposed to say this or then I'm like, nope, I'm done. And it really confuses people when you won't tell them what you believe. I had a <laughs> neighbor that's, that wanted me to, they, um, I was talking about a near death experience and they um, wanted to. Uh, or I tell them that this person had a hellish experience, but then all they did was ask for God 
and say, God, please save me. And this guy was an atheist. And uh -huh. um, well, I say he was an atheist. He grew up Catholic, but he just quit being a believer. Um, and God saved him out of it. And she said automatically, nope, nope, that's impossible. That's not what the Bible says, blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay, I said, okay, I'm done. I was like, I'm not going to, I was like, I'm not, I'm just telling somebody else's experience. I'm not going to go into it and wouldn't let off of it. But then eventually went, um, so do you believe that you go to heaven through G the salvation of Jesus' blood? I was like, I'm not going to talk about anything. Well, if you're ashamed of him, he's ashamed of you. I was like, that's, I didn't even say that. But that's, that's the experience I get with a lot of Christians is that if you don't say the right words to them, they're going to automatically, you know, cut you off and use the Bible to say that you're, you're saying you're not a believer. And it doesn't say that you can't be friends with people. Even if I wasn't a believer, what yeah. would that matter? You're supposed to love me less. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I think that's our job is just, just love everybody, you know, and, and give, give people uh, an avenue to become better and to yeah. use their, their um, gifts to help other people. Mm -hmm. You know, if somebody is able to, um, to find out who you are and, and see the work that you've done. I mean, it may help them. It may help them be stronger. Cause I know some artists that they're afraid they can't do their art because they're afraid people judge them, mm -hmm. you know, because yeah. of what it is, because it's controversial, you know, right. and I'm like, who cares? I mean, everything's controversial if you ask the right people. Yeah, that's true. Hey guys, I want to personally thank everyone for liking and sharing my videos. Uh, if you want to continue to see my content, all you got to do is press that subscribe button and I'll notify you as soon as a new video comes out. I don't get paid for any of this. So if you want to buy some of my merch, like my shirts, like Jesus is a badass or my don't be a dick shirt, uh, you can easily go to my merch store, which is at SOGTV.org, which I will have it in the description at the, every video. So push that, go buy yourself a shirt. I appreciate it. Have a blessed day and I will see you at the next episode. Thank you.